a video on tomato sauce so um, I made a lasagna um, the other day and um, I made the tomato sauce for it and I reduced it down uh, and then there just wasn't quite enough um, tomato sauce so what I did do was I added another tin of tomatoes like fresh tomatoes and then didn't didn't carry on cooking it uh, and then I didn't taste it I just kind of ate the um, ate lasagna and it was and it was lovely and it had a, a, a flavor of fresh tomatoes to it um, and it kind of got me thinking that um, when you make a ragu would it be kind of nicer you kind of cook the ragu well the ragu is like a, a, a past, uh, meat sauce really um, but when you cook the tomatoes down uh, and make like a tomato sauce would it kind of lift the flavour of the tomato sauce if we then put some, well, not fresh, but tinned tomatoes back in it that hadn't been cooked down, like stewed? And then I was kind of thinking, uh, I remember working with a chef and he used to um, make sauces. And what he'd do, he was a very good chef, extremely good. He's not a chef anymore, which is such a shame. Um, he would make a sauce, uh, like a bone uh, from from make a stock and then make the sauce from the uh, the bone stock and then he would say what you do is he'd uh, refresh the sauce with a few roasted bones at the very last minute and then serve the sauce so it kind of brought a flavor back to the sauce and kind of take away that stewed type of flavor from things that have been cooking for a long time so that's my kind of thought that I'll make some tomato sauce and then we'll I'm not using cheap tomatoes um, because, well, you know, I, I, I think I, uh, I think it's it's really easy to kind of make nice things with expensive ingredients, um, but it's a little bit harder to make um, nice things uh, with cheaper ingredients. You need to just put a little bit of work in, but not everyone can afford to buy proper uh, Samazana tomatoes. You know, like um, the world's a bit tough at the moment for a lot of people. Um, so using cheaper ingredients. I think it's always a good idea. Uh, we just have to work a little bit harder. So it's going to cook down for three hours or so. Um, so my idea is that what we'll do is I want I still want the the, 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 the pasta sauce or well, the smart sauce to have a good consistency to it. So I don't really want to add lots of liquid to it. Uh, I just kind of want the tomato pulp. So we'll sit out the juice from this and we'll put the juice in now from the tomatoes from the tomatoes that we're going to add at the very end and we'll keep those tomatoes to one side and then so this is uh, two medium sized onions and then there's already two tins uh, worth of tomatoes in it um, and then put the juice from the third tin and we're going to save those we'll make the sauce we'll cook it down there's a little bit of salt in as well we'll cook it down get all the flavors kind of all, all the sugars caramelizing all that kind of stuff get that depth of flavor from the from the slow cooking and then we'll freshen that flavor up with some um fresh tomato not fresh tomatoes but tins uh, uh, tomatoes from the tin so we kind of get the richness of the of the of the, of the long cooking process but we still retain some freshness uh, from these tomatoes that haven't been stewed down and i'm kind of i think it'll work i think it might i think it'd be interesting uh, and I don't know why, I can't think, hmm, I don't know if anything, but some, everyone's done everything before, there's no new dishes, there's no new anything, um, but I've never kind of come across this, so I'm kind of quite curious, um, but there we go, we'll see how it turns out. Right, it's had about three hours cooking down slowly, it's darkened and it's thickened up, so let's have a taste. Let's get another film. nice it's tomato it's kind of rich um so we're gonna have a little kind of remember what it's gonna taste like now we'll take some out it in something ever prepared as usual so i'll take some out i mean it's inevitable i'm gonna add that back to that but i just want something that i can compare in flavor too so a little bit of liquid's gonna come out so that will water it down slightly I 
Maybe we just need to, no, we'll taste it now and then we might just bring those tomatoes up to temperature and then kind of see. Yeah, it uh, immediately stops it from tasting that, takes that stew flavour away from it. Yeah, so concentrated, but without without that kind of a loss of, of, of deep flavour. So that's kind of quite interesting. Hmm. So even just eating the tomatoes in that has. That's interesting, is that? That's interesting. I don't know what this means. I don't, I don't know what this means. But we've kind of intensified the tomatoes without making them taste stewed. So this tastes stewed and, and kind of quite kind of quite rich. Like a heavy tomato flavour. But with that, we still kind of got depth of flavour, but we have lined it up a little bit in flavour. Um, and that's not just because we've watered it down, it's because it's got the, the less stewed tomatoes put into it. So, I don't know what practical applications this has. Like I don't, I don't kind of quite know. It's, um, I think, so how can I think, think my way through this? So, um, generally, generally, like depth of flavour with things, um, it, it, you get it through time. So all the things that have got depth of flavour are because the, a, lot, a lot of time and, and, and effort has been put into them. So if you imagine like a young cheese and a mature cheese, you know, it is it, a, a mature cheese has got depth of flavour because of the time that it's been, the age of it, so time. So in the same with things like soya sauce or fish sauce or Worcestershire sauce, those kind of things, and wine, and whiskey, you can't get that flavour with, with those things, like the depth of flavour, the umami type of flavour, without without the age, without them being aged. So I think, so what, what, what's my thought with that? I don't know now. So, but with this, we've managed to get depth of flavour, but still kind of keep it quite quite light um, so I don't know if practical applications I don't know if you kind of wanted something to be lighter like a summertime type of dish you know you can lift you can lift the flavor by adding some keeping some of the tomatoes back and adding the tomatoes back to it uh, and then if you want something that's that's more richer like a more of a winter time thing you would not bother saving the tomatoes out of it so it kind of improves a cheap product no end just cooking it and doing that i don't know what kind of practical applications i mean it's just something that i found kind of quite interesting it will be at some point Yeah, I think, okay, right, okay, so, there's a, can be a clanginess to things, like a, like a, the flavour, like the, the, the mouthfeel of something can be kind of quite claggy, but you can't get to depth of flavour without making some things a little bit claggy in taste, so, like a tomato, paste 
like a tomato puree. It's kind of quite claggy. It's not very, it's not very nice to eat. But we can take away that clagginess from the tomato sauce. So it's not claggy, claggy, claggy. But it's getting there. It's like richness. It kind of goes richness and then a bit like, uh, overly rich and then claggy. So we can have depth of flavour without the clanginess by adding some of the tomatoes back to the sauce after the after it's been cooked out. So I don't know what kind of practical use that is. It's just kind of quite interesting. I'll find a use for it. I'm going to use that for something else, but that's just an interesting little experiment. Someone else must have done it. Someone else must be faffing around doing something similar, you know, or it must be some kind of technique that I don't know about, um, or a lost technique that people kind of don't do anymore. But anyway, that's kind of quite interesting. Um, I suppose the comparison would be to buy some really expensive tomatoes and see what they taste out of a tin. Maybe. Maybe I'll have to do the experiment again. Maybe I'll do the experiment again. I'll buy some expensive tomatoes and we'll do like a comparison between expensive tomatoes and then cheaper tomatoes and see if we can make the cheaper tomatoes as good as the expensive tomatoes, which is, that's probably how we do it. That's probably how we do it. I have seen people do comparisons of proper Samazar tomatoes and cheaper uh, tins of tomatoes. Uh, so I don't need to kind of need to kind of do that, but that's probably how we, probably how we, we, we turn a cheaper tin of tomatoes into tasting uh, a lot better. I suppose the comparison would be to um, make a tomato sauce from proper Samazar tomatoes or Samazar or cherry tomatoes, something like that, and then see how far we need to reduce the sauce down to make something in a similar kind of flavour. Because that Samazar tomatoes uh, are certainly a lot more concentrated in flavour. And that's probably, what the, yeah, so this, this probably is the practical application for it that you, we couldn't be able to, we wouldn't be able to cook the cheap tomatoes down enough to kind of get the flavour that we did would do in a San Marzano tomato without it becoming too claggy and without it becoming too thick and too intense but by adding some of the freshest the uncooked tomatoes from the tin back to it that's probably how we would do it so I think that's that's the application there we go I'll, I'll have a faff around uh, if I'm out and I'm buying some uh, it's Christmas uh, there's been quite a while before this video kind of comes out. Uh, it's Christmas at the moment. I don't, I don't like going. I don't like going shopping at Christmas, in between Christmas and New Year. It's just too busy. It's you know, um, and it's you know, and it's unnecessary. Uh, but anyway, so interesting experiment. Uh, there'll be more experiments in a similar type of vein to kind of go along with it. A success? Mm -hmm, maybe. So I couldn't resist. I went out and bought some premium. Um, Tomatoes. So let's see what the yield. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna save on washing up. I'm gonna use that pan to make this uh, next batch of sauce. Uh, so let's see what the yield is. Uh, it weighs. So I'm just rushing. I'm not bothered about this. getting a little bit of extra flavour out of that pan. There'll be some residue left in there for the sauce, but it's not going to affect the flavour that much. What's that? 880-ish uh, grams of that sauce. So, uh, let's weigh this on you. Let's do it properly. You have to do it off camera because the uh, the chopping board's not level. So, onion wise. Tin. This it's got a drained weight of what? Drained weight of 260 grams. So. Let's 
actually look. So I think it will be tomato and juice. Dong! A little bit of salt in there. Start off the cooking process, and then we want some. It's kind of quite thick. I think it's thick already. Right, so we'll use that liquid to start off the cooking of the onions in the pan and then we'll add the tomatoes to it. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? I don't need to do any more explaining. Uh, those into there, juice in the pan, start the, cook start the cooking of the onions that way and then And then, uh, and then add the tomatoes to it and cook it down until it tastes good. Although, I'll taste it when it comes up to temperature. I think it's probably, do you know, I bet they're sitting. I bet these are just concentrated, that's why they're a better flavour. Yeah, that's an interesting thought I've just had, isn't it? So. Not going to save on washing up because we're doing that, so those in recycling. Heat under that just to get everything going and moving. Yeah, those cheap tomatoes are just watery, aren't they? Yeah, so liquid will start coming out of the onions and they'll cook a little bit before we just add the tomatoes in. Well there is, I've got mixed feelings about adding, um, if you should fry off your onions before you make a sauce. Because there's different people around the world do it in different ways. So they, like South American countries, when they're making tomato sauces, they just blend all the vegetables up and then add the tomatoes uh, to the raw vegetables and cook it that way so I don't think there's a I don't think there's a right and a wrong way of doing things I just think there's your way of doing things if I'm honest and we'll just get a bit of water in there and swirl those out I don't th yeah I think we'll get a higher yield with this because Tomatoes are going to be more concentrated to start off with, but anyway, so soften the onions and then we'll add the tomatoes, bring it up to temperature, and then we'll see what it tastes like. Actually, what does it taste like now? I'm waffling, aren't I? Doesn't taste any different than, normal, than a cheap tin of tomatoes at the moment, but anyway, so we'll carry on. And we'll see what it turns out like cooking for about four hours, three, four hours, something like that, on a really low, on a really low heat. But anyway, there we go. Right, it's cooked down, and it's just starting to catch on the bottom. So don't make it any more reduced than that. Let's wait to see how much is in there, and then. We'll, have to do, we'll, do the, we'll do a taste test, and what I'm going to have to do is we'll. It's, it's kind of a. Oh, never turn that. What we call it on? Never turn my scales on. Uh, we'll have to heat up the uh, sauce that I made before, um, because testing a tasting a something hot against something cold, um, that's not kind of a fair kind of test, is it? Do you know, I think they're going to come out about the same. Oh no, there's about 100 grams more in this. So there's 950. 960 grams worth of sauce in that one. So was the, eight, was the 850 in this one? Yeah. So was, uh, you get a slightly higher yield with the more expensive tomatoes just wipe up there while I remember so we'll heat I need to heat it up anyway so we'll just heat this one up 
and then we'll do a, a quick taste test and then kind of have our have our thoughts. Ah, no, but I did I did put some tins with the tomatoes stirred back in there, didn't I? So probably the yield would be less if I'd cooked it down like that. So yeah, I've got some things to think about, haven't I? So we'll just put that on the back and we'll just give that a gentle heat. And then we'll taste them both when they're at a roughly same, same type of uh, temperature and then we can get like a fair idea of taste. Right, so let's have a taste. So this is the cheap tomatoes. Let's get a bit, a bit bigger bit than that. Nice, nice. A little bit more concentrated in flavour. Not a huge noticeable difference in flavour. Out of interest, I think adding those tomatoes back to that to that after we cooked it vastly improves it. But is there a noticeable difference? No, not really. I think it, it kind of falls in line with my belief that we just have to work a little harder with cheaper ingredients. Um, but we can get really very good results from, from cheaper ingredients. Really good results from cheaper ingredients. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be um, snobbish about it. But anyway, yeah, so that yeah, that's kind of quite interesting. And a huge taste, a huge um, difference in, in cost. I mean, that'll be that'll be like three pounds more than that. Is a three pounds worth of taste difference? No, not at all, not at all. So buy cheap tomatoes. You just have to work a bit harder. But if you're cooking things from scratch, it's not that much more work, is it? So a success. However you look at it.